How many collars are you wearing right now, you rich fuck? Just two. Just two. <laughs> you come, I'm His glad boxers you could, have a collar on them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you could join us from lacrosse practice today, dude. <laughs> hey, how's the industry going, you piece of shit? <laughs> it's going great, man. It's going great. All right, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Another Bourbon Show. Uh, tonight, we're going to be drinking a uh, bottle that Ryan, he uh, he's offered it up to us. He sent it out to us. Um, I don't know a whole lot about the mash bill. I know that they source their whiskey from two different distilleries. Um, some of it comes from OZ Tyler or OZ Taylor distillery. Uh, distillery and then the rest of it all comes from mgp and then this company blends it together and uh and they bottle it um so ryan why don't you uh show us the bottle and tell us what you know about it because i don't even know the proof on it yeah so it's uh it's jepson's bourbon and it's a binnies they call it a hand pick at binnies i guess not a store pick it was hand picked so it is a straight bourbon whiskey it's a single barrel cask strength so it's 59.5% alcohol, 119 proof from barrel C4, the barrel number. And it Boom. is uh, cognac cask finished. Okay. Hey, on the back, it, it should say uh, distilled in enlisted state. It says uh, single barrel distilled in Indiana. Okay. So what that tells us right away is that that is, since it says single barrel, it can't be the blend that uh, Jepson's does between OZ Tyler and MGP. So we know that this is a straight MGP barrel that we're drinking here. Something that Jepson's bought and they never, all they did was picked it from MGP and then they decided to bottle it. So, I mean, MGP makes some good shit. Yes, they you do. You said this one's 119? 119. All right. 119. So it's a, it's a heavy hitter and I tried it over the weekend. It uh I mean a lot of this is you know from the samples and everything, but it's uh definitely a sipper. It, you wouldn't think it's 119, at least I don't think, um, until you read yeah. that. You'd be like, oh no. <laughs> okay. So Steven, <laughs> what do you think of that mistake. label? <laughs> I think the uh the label, it looks cool to me. Um, uh, but it kind of looks like a rum label, maybe. Um, there's something about it where it's like, it sort of looks like that. Like, I think Sailor Jerry kind of like pioneered that, that look where it's like kind of a traditional tattoo kind of style or something about like, like it kind of looks naval vaguely to me or something like that. You might see it on the back of a boat or you might see it, um, on like the stand at like, a if you go to like an old school barber that has like, it could be like an aftershave bottle or something. There's something where it's like, it's got an edge to it. Is kind of what I'm getting mm -hmm. at. And you can kind of sense that. So I think that's a look that bourbon doesn't really go for um, that often. So I think that's kind of unique in that way. Um, I don't really care for the top. I know this is a pick, so they have a Benny's label up top. But around the neck, I'm looking at a, another picture online. And <clears throat> it just looks like that part is kind of an afterthought where it just says Jepson's. There's not a lot to it. Um, but overall, I think it's a, it's a decent looking label and I'm going to give it a six on my scale. I think it's an above average, pretty good look. Um, but it's, I don't know. It's, it's, it's unique. It doesn't really look like whiskey that much, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. All right. All right. Fair enough. Um, have you, I can't uh, say... have you, oh. you Googled the Malort bottle? Just Jepson's Malort. Let me look up the, do that, oh, um... the Malort. A Malort bottle. It's pretty much straight up a Jepson's Malort bottle with different wording on it. Um, and I believe like the top on the Malort bottle is pretty much just this in a smaller form wrapped around. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So I can tell you that uh, I don't know how much that one cost you, Ryan, but I know that Jepson's bourbon in this area is pretty easy to find. Um, when I say that, I mean, if you go to a liquor store, you will never find it at a grocery store around here. You won't find it at 
Um, like you got to go to an actual liquor store that has a, a solid slice, like Dean's. Dean's carries uh, Jepson's. I would guess that they probably carry it over at Lebanon Wine and Spirits, but probably not at the the Glenmart location. Um, and it's always going to be around twenty to twenty five dollars for the standard. I don't know what the what the barrel pick was. So Forty two ninety nine. Ooh, wow. That's a big jump. That's a that $17 is, jump. You know, I think the Jepson's bourbon here was a little bit more than that. I thought it was in between 25 and 30, but I could be, I could be wrong. I mean, Vinny's had, they had like two different picks and then just the regular one just spread everywhere on the shelf. Is so, it always mm-hmm. cast strength or all these cast strength that we're comparing? I don't think no, they're standard. No, they're not. No, it's not. Um, this is just because it's handpicked from Benny's. Okay, so they that's have part one, of the joke, have, too. And now that I'm thinking, too, I believe they have one other handpicked one that's $34.99 that, might, that is finished in sherry casks. And was that and actually when, you... when, I, when I bought this, I thought I grabbed it just because the shelf the, the, on the shelf was kind of confusing. So, you know, I just grabbed the one in the middle. I thought it was the sherry cask one. And then when I checked out, it was forty two ninety nine. I'm like, oh, no, nah, whatever. I don't feel like walking back. <laughs> I'll, just, <laughs> I'll just buy this one. <laughs> now, whenever people hear Jepsons, they their mind typically automatically goes to Malort. Um, but I want to make it clear to everybody that we are drinking their bourbon. And don't get the two confused because... I've heard a lot of great things about this bourbon. I've never had it. Um, so I'm really looking forward to trying it. Um, but yeah, I've heard good things about their bourbon. And of course, we all know what most people think about Malor. So yeah, when they see but the it's name a solid Chicago things. company. Yeah, even on the bottle, I don't know if you noticed it, Stephen, it's the uh, little shield with the Chicago flag. So um, they were originally founded in Chicago, uh, Malort. And then, uh, no, hold on. They got bought out by some lady. I, I, she retired now and sold it off to CH Distillery. But it was actually, pre- every all their products were, you know, what they had, just their Malort line, was produced in Florida for about 25 years. So within the last three or four years, it's now made in Chicago again. So it had that Chicago flag on the bottle, but it wasn't being made in Chicago for almost three decades. Hmm. Yeah, that's which, pretty cool. That's yeah, yeah. Because I can, which you, is, you kept it short, so I can just edit that out pretty easily. So pretty cool. <laughs> well, no, it's like you, you have the Chicago flag on it, and it's not made in Chicago. You know, so it's nice that it finally is. Oh, I got you. Uh, here's a question: How long has Chicago had that as their city flag? Oh, I don't know. And you want us? I bet to it hasn't been twenty five or thirty years. You, you want us so? to vote for you as a fucking alderman of Chicago, and here you are. You don't even. <laughs> I, I don't even live in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck you guys! Let's drink. Jesus Christ! Do it. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Uh, nineteen thirty-three. No, original nineteen seventeen. That flag. They've had that flag for that long. Yep. And they still haven't improved it. What the fuck? <laughs> I think I think that flag and St. Louis's flag are two of the coolest ones. I think well, they're both nice. Most people would say that the St. Louis flag is one of the best city flags in the country. Never once. And that's that. a fact. Google it, bitch. <laughs> All right, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> it's got a good nose to it. I like this. It does, yeah. yeah. I get apple. That's the primary thing that I get. I get like a pear, apple-y pear, like a green apple. And vanilla. That's about oh, vanilla. And well, of course, yeah. A lot of caramel, yeah, a lot of vanilla. Caramel, a lot of caramel. But, but there is a there is a fruit in there as well. I really like the nose. I really like you. Oh, oh, got him. You're so sweet. Got him, dude. Sick. <laughs> you know what that reminds me of? Smoke what? wagon. Does it? 
Mm. I definitely get that a lot of spice at the end. Kind a lot of, of cinnamon. brown sugar. Cinnamon, yeah. Yeah, I can see what you're saying there. I get a lot of brown sugar, a lot of cinnamon. Yeah, I'm not going to say it's going to, it's like neck and neck with uh, Smoke Wagon, but it certainly reminds me of Smoke Wagon. Yeah. MGP. Uh, <laughs> uh, that, that hug is real warm. You were saying that it, it didn't is. taste like um, it was, you know, around 119 proof or whatever to you. But yeah. I, I feel like it's, it, it doesn't, it doesn't have a harsh front of the palate. But it hangs around, and it's like it's in the back of my ears a few seconds yeah, after I've drank it. I tied one on on Saturday. It was, you know, watching Wild Card Weekend, so I was drinking all day mainly. So I was I was a few drinks in before I had this. Yeah, it's always some event every weekend. So yeah, <laughs> we get it. <laughs> Got to get rid of the shakes, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's a spicy. It's That's a, how it's it is in the way. industry. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's almost it like the industry. A, it's almost like Red Hots, the candy. That's what I kind of liken it to. Yeah. And that was yeah. exactly what I called Smoke Wagon whenever yeah. we drink it on the show. I kept talking about it being it's just like a Red Hot. Yep. Agreed. It's cinnamon, but it's like spicy cinnamon, but sweetness to it. I liked when yeah. I said it better, but yeah, good call. Yeah. <laughs> I liked when I said it fucking a year and a half ago. God damn it. God damn, we've been doing this show for too long. It doesn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> we got no excuse for this. <laughs> Should have learned our lesson. <laughs> it's really on you in a way. Cause the Who, fact me? that it happened. Yeah. I don't know why we haven't called this off. It's on both of you. I'm just saying. If it's if we're now talking about stuff and I'm saying stuff we said a year and a half ago, that says more about the two of you than it doesn't me okay yeah it's true that's fair <laughs> <laughs> yeah i really, I, like I really it, enjoy this yeah. you like i it? like this yeah i gotta say i think that you got a steal for 42 dollars yep that's good to hear because like, I, I was like yeah like it better be good i'm not walking back to swap out the bottles so it better be good and like the only thing that i noticed doing some like research online the pretty sure the proof is pretty similar but you know this says cognac and the other bottle says sherry so it's the mm -hmm. only way to really distinct between the two like that is really good yeah I'm gonna have to buy you well a bottle. i like it <laughs> i like it a lot let's i would be curious now of course we're drinking a pick my mind immediately wanders and i say what does it taste like just off the shelf you know yeah just the standard i can't imagine it's bad if this is the product you can get from a pick but it, it can vary a lot you know so that's my first question yeah, i also wonder could look at too if i you know if i'm at a benny's or a liquor store i can take a look for it and then maybe we could do that down the line too i also wonder like the uh, the standard off the shelf version. How consistent is it, bottle to bottle, batch to batch? Like, like is it consistently the same flavor profiles? Because there's there's certain ones that aren't right. Like um, the one that most pops into my mind. It's a single barrel, um, but Henry McKenna ten year. Like that, they're all single barrels. But there are some like Henry McKenna bottles out there that are, I'm just going to be honest, bad. And then there's others that are like mind blowingly good. And I'm wondering about the standard off the shelf version of Jepson's. Like, is there some variation or do they have it locked in to where they pretty much always get the consistent flavor? Batch to batch. Especially just curious. if they're blending it with two different distilleries. If this one's not, then how, how can we really say what the standard off the shelf one tastes like yeah. exactly good job right yeah props to ch distilling um ch distillery i they uh this was before covid but they had us out there 
think right when they bought the Lord before they started production on it, but a bunch of just cool local dudes who like making kind of, you know, off the wall spirits, obviously buying mm-hmm. the Lord kind of shows that, but um, yeah, they have a, you know, they have some gins and vodkas that are a little off the wall. So they're just cool local guys. So if you guys are in the Chicago area, I know they have a place downtown now um, right in the loop, but their original distillery is south side like Pilsen area um so kind of near the south loop so a little industrial area it's probably five or ten minutes from Lagunitas if you've ever seen their their brewery in Chicago it's it's a cool spot though check it out so you want to rate let's do it all right I'll go first uh my mind is set on a seven nine um I think that it's a Really? No, you know what? I changed that. I'm changing that. I'm changing it to an eight one. Um, wow. It's a really, it's a really good pour. I really enjoy the flavors of this. Um, I can't figure out a weak spot for it. Um, there was one pour where like on the finish, it kind of had like a, like a weird aftertaste. But I took another sip right away and I didn't get that again. And then I paused and I gave it a second and then I took another sip and there was no funky aftertaste on that sip either. Um, So I can't really count a one off weird aftertaste against it. It's. It's really complex. It's got a lot of really cool, interesting flavors. It's got a killer nose. it's well-rounded. It's just a really, really good pour. And I think it is well worth 42, 43 bucks. I would not bat an eye if you said it was $65. I'd be like, that's a good pour at $65 even. So at 42, 43, fuck yeah. Good job. That like that's a great bottle. Glad you liked it, man. Because I, um, I was and I got no and I got no I got no cognac flavors at all. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it helped. I'm sure it helped. What you know, round out the bourbon. I'm sure it added some level of complexity to it. I'm sure it did something to it. But I don't taste cognac when I'm sipping it. So I think like your very first sip, you kind of you can get the mouth feel of a cognac right like as soon as it hits your mouth and then it it levels out to all the other complex fa- flavors but but if you had a glass of you know remy martin or something the very first sip that you take you can you can see the similarity there and and now in like additional thought the dryness it's it's a dr- it's got a dryness to it that's cognac ish so yeah but yeah i think it's great i would give it a 8.9 whoa jesus yeah i like it quite a bit i like it i like it nearly as much as i like the smoke wagon so i like the smoke wagon comparison (laughs) but i'll say my justification for not giving it higher not that i mean you're probably surprised how high i put it but the reason why i don't put it the same as smoke wagon is that this has a slightly sort of um I don't know if the bitter is the right word, but sort of like a little bit of a weird aftertaste a long while after I drink it. Like I'm sitting here now and there is a little something in there that could be cognac. I'm not really familiar, that familiar with cognac, but it is a different sort of aftertaste. It's a little more like pungent that I'm, that I'm used to. So um, I don't love that, but every other part of it, I really like a lot. And um, I'm very curious to try the off the shelf bourbon because both like the straight bourbon and some more of this cast drink because i'm just curious what it tastes like how consistent it is like we talked about because this uh this pick was a home run yeah and i think like dan if you go see your wife's family in peoria um i think they have a benny's in peoria now right they do where i'm yeah. crazy yeah so or springfield uh i believe there's one in springfield too so there is yeah, maybe you uh, you know can pick up one of the sherry cask strength bottles too, and try that and see see how these two compare. Mm-hmm. But I'm gonna go right on the nose, 8.0. I really liked it. Um, very complex. 
like you said, you get the dryness of the cognac. I really like cognac. Like this, I feel like this is a really good after dinner bourbon, if that makes sense. Just the mm-hmm. the taste that you get. Like we talked about the vanilla, the cinnamon, the brown sugar. There's a little like chocolateness to it too, or um, I don't know what the like word a dark is. chocolate. Like a I to- can see dark, dark chocolate, chocolate, you know, a little toffee esque. Uh, I really liked it though. Um, That's I'll kind of the bitterness it, I'm but, talking about, yeah. by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when people see this bottle, they get scared. And because I know firsthand, you guys don't. You know, you guys see Malort down there, but you don't see it nearly as much as up here. Mm-hmm. That that can scare people away from drinking altogether. Just trying that. If you've never had it before, do yourself a favor. If you're in a town outside of Illinois or, you know, right on the border, go to like a hipster bar. They probably have it there. <laughs> the hipsters seem to like it a lot. And just buy a shot. Or if you got a friend, tell them it's, oh, it's a really good shot of whiskey. If it's on their birthday or something, have them drink it. It's almost appalling. I'm used to it now, so it's it's easy to drink for me. But this, if people see this, they will think it's Malort and they will get scared. But I love their label, so I don't think they should change it either. I just think as a consumer, don't be scared of the Jepson's name because they're putting good good juice in the bottle. Even if, even if it's Malort, like, you know, it's not, I mean, it's not the best thing, but they got really good whiskey. So give them a chance. Another bubble show. I saw a uh, <laughs> article yesterday, or the, I don't know, sometime recently, about how in China during the pandemic, there's this really popular, there's this dish that has become really popular, and it's a snail noodle. Like, Like, even the people who love it talk about how horrible it smells, but that it tastes so good that they don't care. But it's fucking, yeah. Yeah. Some sort of a snail noodle meal. I don't fucking know. I don't even want to know. Disgusting. Yeah, but I don't think I could eat snail. I think think because it's related to, like, anything that's similar to shellfish. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Let's look that up. Well, it has a shell. I mean, yeah, but like, remember when uh, the big low, like all the cicadas that were out? There were news bulletins going out saying if you have a shellfish allergy, do not eat them because people like to to cook them. Apparently, the fuck. I know people do it, man. It's weird. It doesn't fucking say. Is this cargo a shellfish? They just keep fucking. What the shit? I know a way we can find out. It's just have Ryan Let's... eat one next episode. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> <laughs> we can be the resource online where people can go. They'll just be like, they'll just look it up. We'll <laughs> just make a video called "Is Snail a Shellfish?" Trying with our friend allergic to shellfish. Does Ryan go into anaphylactic shock? from this from this food every week it's a new food and <laughs> we see yeah. if ryan goes into shock 